So many labs will provide you with soil test reports of aluminum and lead, even though it may not be part of nutrients you're looking for for your plants. But these two can be potential contaminants, so it's a good idea to look at those numbers and to realize what harm they can cause and what levels are considered high. So this Tobacco University video will hopefully answer some of those questions. So let's get into potential contaminants of aluminum and lead in a soil test report. So first off, aluminum is not an essential plant nutrient, uh, though it's commonly seen in some soils. High levels of aluminum in the soil can also interfere with plant uptake of phosphorus and may cause injury of sensitive plant species like lettuce and beets. As soil pH decreases, the solubility of aluminum increases. It's an inverse relationship here. We could see here there was our um, aluminum concentration in parts per million. Here's our changing pH. As we become more acidic, we're noticing an increase in the aluminum concentration here. And typically above five, five parts per million because they're toxic to tolerant species. Less than two parts per million is generally considered non-toxic. And we can see just how a simple change in pH can really impact that. Now, as I said, pH does impact uh, aluminum. This can also be seen with uh, plants in the degree that they are able to produce roots. Soil test results often indicate elevated aluminum levels in soil with pH levels below 5.0. Liming soils, which will increase the pH to an acceptable level for the crop being grown, will typically reduce the amount of aluminum that's available to plants, and that can be a good thing. Acid-loving plants like rhododendrons, blueberries, azaleas uh, have high tolerance to soil aluminum levels. So for those plants, perfectly fine. However, aluminum is also responsible for the blue color of hydrangeas because of its effect on pigmentation formation, which is why the blue flowering hydrangeas are grown in low soil pH levels. And here we're seeing just the example that uh, pH of 5.1 to 4.0 can have on the root development simply because of the alteration in the availability of aluminum in that soil. Now going on to lead. So lead is a naturally occurring element in soils and typically is present in soils in the range of about 5 to 100 parts per million total lead. Soil test results indicate an estimation of the total lead. It's always good to just have an idea and look at that number. So what, how do you determine whether or not your lead levels are of reason of concern? Well, only when total lead levels typically exceed about 400 parts per million does a U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, list it as an element of concern. If the lead levels are elevated, you should receive appropriate information about potential problems with elevated lead levels and guarding practices to minimize exposure to lead. We kind of see just a general example here of uh, soil lead concentrations. Keep in mind, as we get above 100 parts per billion, we should be keeping children out of the garden, do not grow root crops, safe to grow legumes, fruiting, and leafy vegetables. Getting above 400, that's going to a lot more restrictions. But even at just above 100, typically want to start to take caution. And if you are seeing lead, lead levels above 100, you may want to contact the lab or see if the lab has any information about what might be safe or not safe to grow there. And the soil lead levels, and here we see another little comparison chart here, interpreting the estimation of total lead in soils. Because there's no federal standards for soil lead that has been determined for soils where vegetables will be grown. It is well known that plants vary in their uptake of soil lead, but generally, lead will accumulate in leafy green tissues and in plant roots. The University of Connecticut Soil Nutrient Analysis Laboratory strongly recommends that soils containing 400 parts per million total lead, or greater than that number, should not be used for growing vegetables, herbs, or other food crops. However, even uh, levels under that, uh, there still might be reason for some concern. Typically 100 and less, no real precautions necessary, but as we get over 100, we start getting more and more uh, suggested actions and restrictions potentially on crops to grow in that particular soil. So best management practices for garden soil containing lead. Well, I've got a whole bunch kind of listed here. Again, you're welcome to pause the video and take a better look at it. But generally, gardens should be located away from older painted structures and heavily traveled roads because there was once lead in uh, the gasoline uh, and also lead in paint. 
giving uh, planting preference for fruiting crops like tomatoes, squash, peppers, and soils where elevated uh, lead levels. Uh, remove outside leaves of green leafy uh, vegetables. Peel the root crops and wash all vegetables thoroughly to remove soil particles. Maintain a soil pH of 6.5 to 7.0 by applying limestone at recommended rates because this will reduce the availability of lead uptaken by the plants. So again, we see that pH being very important. Maintain similar organic matter between 5 and 10%. Organic particles will bind the lead, making it less available to plant uptake. And in general, we want to be shooting for that general 5% is just a general target. 10% is getting up there, but that can help reduce the availability of lead. Maintain soil phosphorus levels by applying the recommended amounts of fertilizer to the garden plots. Phosphorus can reduce lead uptake by plants. Minimize dust and exposure to bare soil through the use of mulches. Wash hands thoroughly after contact of lead-contaminated soils. Do not bring food or drinks into the area with contaminated lead soils. Soil on tools, gloves, shoes have elevated lead levels also. Clean before storing or bringing indoors. And lastly, consider raised beds or containerized plantings in soils with elevated lead levels. And I put the resource there at the bottom for a fact sheet if you want to learn more. But keep in mind, it's knowing if your soil is high in lead, you cannot tell by looking. You have to go through and take a soil test. It's highly recommended you do in general, but also take a look at the lead levels because that may determine what you can grow. And it's definitely good to know what the nutrients and pH are and whether that soil is safe to grow whatever food crops you're planning on.